so hi guys welcome back to another video and this video is about android studio tutorial and in this video i'm going to go from scratch that means i'm going to talk about the most basic things about android studio so if you're a complete beginner this video is exactly for you so i'm going to start with creating an empty activity so i'll just open up a new project and then click on empty activity there are other activities as you can see but for now we're just going to click on this empty activity and click on next also, there are other weird OS, TV, automated, but you don't need to worry about them for now. Then you will get this interface and let's type a name for our application and we're going to type here first application because it's going to be your first application or no. And I'm going to keep everything as it is. Language is Kotlin for now. And if you are good in Java or if you prefer Java, just click on Java. It's not going to matter because I'm not going to do I'm not going to do any uh, required coding that you have to do as well so you just have to watch the tutorial and um, get accustomed to how things work in android studio uh, get accustomed to the interface and all so this is the video uh, this is the uh, view that you get after finishing the project uh, after clicking on finish and uh, it's going to take some time if you have just installed android studio uh, probably 10 to 15 minutes for building the griddle if uh, this is the first time and if not then it may take uh, two to three minutes depending upon your system ram and, and other things so my system is an old system so it takes some time like two three minutes to boot up so let's go on to the uh, left side of your android studio and uh, look at this panel here so as you can see there are a lot of things mentioned here and uh, we don't need to worry about them for now i'm going to talk about everything in this video about what are they and why are they here so or what's the use and everything so i think my uh griddle is built now so here uh, you can see there are two main directories app and griddle script what I'm going to talk about in this video is about app so to begin with as you can see this I think it's still running so let's give it some time to finish okay, so I think it's done so this is the uh, screen that you get after uh, you successfully uh, build a griddle and, uh, and this is a hello world text view that you see for now and uh, I'm going to delete this one for because I don't need this one here so I'll just delete it and uh, let's delete it from the so here you can see uh, we have this kotlin file this is the main activity kotlin file here but uh, i'm going to start with the manifest file here so what is manifest file you may be wondering so this uh, as you can see there is something known as xml ns which is xml uh, namespace and this line HTTP. Uh, this is a URI, Uniform Resource Interface, that define your. Uh, that is different for every project that you build, and in, and then there are two application tags inside which you can see, a low backup icon, and these icons are present in the rest folder that I'm going to show you later. These are round icon, theme, and then there's activity where you mention main activity, that is the name of the uh, Java file, Kotlin file for this case. That we have built and that's going to be run when we run this application so this is going to be uh, the big uh, just uh, so when we launch this application we are going to uh, run the main java file and from that everything will be controlled in this case and also the uh, manifest file is also uh, helpful when you have to give permissions for certain things so you can see that all this code is in xml so we have to write in the form of tag. So let's write user permission and Android Studio always recommend us what you want. So you can see here, if you want the internet access for from the phone or calling or whatever you want, we have to first write here that we want this because if, uh, otherwise you can't access internet or any other thing uh, from your mobile device. So this is in a app opening and closing tags because uh, Android Studio works in two ways. One is in language uh, java kotlin and other is xml so xml is for the ui or the interface that you want so 
uh, this manifest file or the layout will be in the XML while the main uh, Kotlin file here that will be in uh, Kotlin or Java that you want so here you can see this folder there's a function name on create and I'm gonna get to why this call on create and uh, uh, what is used in a minute but uh, for now this is just a uh, Java file and you can uh, Kotlin file and you can create other Kotlin uh, file for uh, holding different classes so you don't have a, a messed up uh, one file containing everything and so this uh, folder actually just contains your Java or Kotlin files so let's create uh, let's see the res folder a res has a drawable and in which uh, you uh, store images that you want so I earlier I showed you these uh, launcher icons and they are present in min map in min, in min map uh, you store the icon that will be as a icons for your application you know when you open your phone you have those icons for the application that's what you store here and you mention them in the manifest file here because you can see here so this is for the uh, this is what minmap is for for the icon of your android application drawable store images that you want in your android application and then there are values values create uh, values stores color style and strings so color is for storing uh, the name of the particular hex codes you can just name them anything you want uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, remembering the hex code or different colors as you can see we have three here uh, purple dark blue and light blue not that much good with colors so this is what we have and then there's layout layout is one of the most essential part of your android story because uh, this defines the ui how you're gonna look at your uh, i mean how it's gonna appear on the phone so uh this is uh, in the beginning this just has a hello world text you here and uh, the constraints are set for uh side and down so uh let's so i'm just gonna cut it from my uh, componentry here and uh let's cut it there so nice one and uh let's uh, begin with actually coding it from scratch so we can uh put uh widgets on our layout in two ways we can just drop it from the panel that i give or can write the code ourselves or tags ourselves so here you can see it says android x or constraint layout or widget or constraint layout and uh, to begin with i'm gonna just uh, delete this and write linear layout for now and uh, by default it's gonna have the orientation of horizontal so I'm just gonna have it this uh, rename as uh, linear layout, and what this does, does is it uh, places the widgets in horizontal or vertical order. And let me show you how. So if I just grab this text view here, you can see they are uh, aligning in the horizontal manner. And uh, if I draw this button here, also this is also aligning in the horizontal order. And again, a text view. So you can see that. Uh, oh, I, I don't have uh, these in a vertical order or I don't have the freedom of them in uh, the way I want so let's just uh, set the orientation to vertical and this is the code you as you can see this uh, is an, a single tag and it's closed with the slash in the end so be aware of that so if I set the orientation to uh, vert vertical now if I grab the text views one two and three you can see these are in the word in the vertical order and let's uh, delete this as well so of course if you don't want them so what we're going to do is we're going to code these text views and everything mm -hmm. else from scratch so let's first. so i'm going to select them and delete them okay, so now let's start with uh, getting an opening tag uh, and uh, let's name it text view so capital T because uh, you have to be careful with the case I mean the language is case sensitive so it's going to appear with this uh, layout width and height and let's see it uh, what these match parent and wrap parent are so if you uh, select match parent in both height and width you can see it covers the entire screen and uh, what this uh, match parent does is it set the uh, height and width of the 
lay of these widgets to the height and width of the parent in this case the linear layout and since the linear layout cover the whole screen it also cover the whole screen and if i set the wrap content you can see the height just uh shrink down to some small size and if i does it with the width as well uh you can actually not see it it just because of those uh, points that you can see that there was a wrap there was a text with you so let's set the text and uh, so we are going to hard code it so it's going to show us a warning or recommend us that we should not use uh hard coded text in our text view so i'm just going to write hello world i mean why not and you can see this uh, sort of uh, wrap the content of the text view around those hello worlds so it's only as big as uh, it required it's not going to cover unnecessary space so that's why a wrap content is a good option although you can actually manually set the height and width with uh, like 20 dp or 40 dp i'm going to get to to that but uh, what i've done is uh, layout gravity and i'm setting it to center so i'm just going to place this widget in the center of the screen and also you can do this thing uh, with the help of i'm going to show you what i'm talking about uh, so let's see uh, so what text color does text color actually require hex code and unfortunately i don't remember any hex code for now so i'm just going to give it here and what i'm uh, looking for is uh, margins uh so let's try some hex code i only know one hashtag f4f4f4 four, 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 four. maybe if i can just uh, luckily get one right okay so this one looks light green it can work so pardon me i don't remember any hex code uh and let's set the font size to uh 24 dp 20 dp 24 sp so there's a so there are two way to set the size one is dp and one is sp and uh, what what are these you may be wondering so what uh, android does is like every phone has a different ppi pixel per inch so you cannot depend upon pixels as a way to scale these uh, layout margins or uh, so what android does is it use uh, dp and sp so that it doesn't have to write the write the application for every model of the uh, every model that there is so let's uh, do a quick google search on what is uh let's write text size sp and uh, dp let's see what it uh shows so it says uh, sp stands for scale independent pixel and dp stands for density independent pixels so you can see uh, everything is uh, that talks about uh, being independent from the pixels the reason that i told you because every phone has different ppi and uh, depending on the pixel will result in we have to make every uh every app available for every model so we tried a uh, code for every model and that's one thing a lot of work and that's don't and that's what we don't and that's what we don't want when we are coding we want to reduce as much work as you can so i have created an image view here and uh, image view also asks for layout width and height and this time i'm going to set it to 40 dp and 40 dp again dp is density independent pixels and i'm going to close the tag also i'm going to set the margins so i think i skipped the margins in the text view so the margins says is there are uh, two ways to define margins you can individually set the margin for left right up and down or you can just uh, write layout margin and then set 20 dp and that's going to be uh, the margin for both i um, mean for all top bottom left and right and let's try the source so already there are few images available in android studio so i mean this is not like what 
you want you have to just store images in the drawable and then you uh, then that will be available for you and i'm just gonna use one that is a uh, by default already present in the drawable so it's not difficult for you to get an image because you may be wondering that you have to have same image and i think this is fine i'm just gonna place this in the center so i think i should just scale the image a bit it's set it to 80dp and 80dp and uh, gravity layout gravity and i'm going to set it to center that's fine I think now I, I want is a edit text so what edit text this is uh, it's helpful if you want to take the input from the users so that's a uh, practice i mean that's a way you can do so again, i'm just gonna write edit text and so I'm just gonna set the height and width to let's say 100 dp and uh, 40 dp for the height and uh, you can see now it's uh, there in if you see the blue, blue screen and I'm gonna set the uh, orientation I mean gravity to center total gravity to center so it's placed in the center and uh, I think that's uh, it for the text view uh well, let's set the margin so 20 dp as well and i'm gonna have a button here now so button are a good way to uh submit something to for uh, some actions to be taken like if you want to do a google search or something like that. okay so i forgot to mention hint there and hint direct is a placeholder and it's a good way to tell the user what you expect from them to write in those edit text like if you want them to write your uh, email address or password you mentioned that email should be written like email or password there and uh, in the button i think i should just uh, write text here a hard text and uh, i'm gonna write like a submit here as you can see so i think you just uh, place it in the center as well and i think i should just uh, set the color so let's set the text color as a uh, I don't know any hex code as I told you so so I'm gonna set the text color here and uh, as I don't know any hex let's add some color here hashtag f2 f4 and white is not good so I think I should try something else maybe to some I think I saw red I think red is fine and uh, let's set, uh, set layout gravity center and uh, i'm just gonna shorten the width a bit it look weird 30 uh 40 i think is better i think this is fine i want to set the background color of this button to something like uh, uh light blue or uh, let's try some code like uh hashtag f or f3 something that will make some color hey why don't i just uh, click on that gray but maybe to i think this is fine hey why don't think of it as sooner i can just do this so uh, let's run this now and see uh, so for running this, uh, you need to have an emulator installed. So click on Tools and Nvidia Manager. Here I already have installed an emulator, but if you are using Android for the first time, you need to install one. So I'm using a Pixel 2 API 29. API 28 was, I think, 9. I'm using 10. And uh, so when you run the Android Studio, it will uh, when you run the emulator, it takes some time to boot up. So let's uh, speed this up, and it may take some time for you to for this uh, emulator to boot up and uh, run. So as you can see, it takes a lot of time. You can just look on the clock, and uh, let's see if it works or not so this is some other application that's not this is some something that i was working previously 
I mean, I was just uh, just created the project that time only. So let's just close this and uh, uh, so actually it's not installed at this point. It takes some time to install. Oh yeah, okay, it's now installed. And this is the app that we've written so far. And congratulations if you have been able to do it. But now what I want to talk about is something very important that is called activity lifespan. So what you just saw was a single activity. And I told you earlier that on create has some uh, significance here. And this save instant state burden as well. And what is important for save on save instant save instant state is important because uh, many times you destroy your activity and uh, you want to recreate when you recreate the activity you lost the previous data so save instant state is important you override the function and you, then you do some stuff that I won't talk on talk about in this video. Uh, so on create is the uh, is the first function when uh, that launch when you launch your app. It's the first function that is called when you launch your app. And the next function that you launch that is called is on start. On start just set up a few things uh, to make the app interactive and the app actually start working when you call uh, on resume method. Which is when the app start functioning and uh, after that um, there are a few other functions that is like on pause. Uh, which is called when you switch from an active to another and uh, when you uh, switch from one active to another for a very long time or when you uh, switch to another app then another function is called which is on stop and in this function uh, your phone try to free some memory which is required for some other app to function because it may require some more RAM and your RAM is already full at that time so it frees some RAM some resources from that application and the last is on destroy. This is called when you so let's write print statement printing what function is called at what time. So to begin with, I'm going to print in the on create fun in the on create function printing on create function is called or just on create function. Then I'm going to do the same with other functions. Like I'm going to print in on start. I'm going to say print ln and on start function is called and then I'm going to print on on resume so just to give a reminder on create is called when you launch the app on start is then called and on resume is called and the app become interactive with you on pause is called when you uh skip to another activity like if you are uh viewing uh instagram and uh, or used to say say if you're using whatsapp and you are just on the home screen then you click on, click on or uh, you press some uh person to uh, message them then you shift into another another activity and when you shift to another activity on pause function is called and if you are there for a long time on stop function is called and when you uh, turn off the app or you just you know you swipe the app or you backspace to the home screen on destroy function is called and if I run the app now so let's see so in the run you can see on create function is called, then on start is called, and then on resume is called. So I just find three functions are already called. And uh, if, I turn, if I show you my emulator, then uh, and I so on create is called, on start is called, and on resume is called. And uh, let's say if I just press this, uh, go to my uh, home page and the home screen. Uh, you can say on pause is called and then on stop when you are on the home screen. If I turn back on to my page, then you can say on start is called again and then on resume is called. And when you shift from one activity to another, then you call on pause and from on pause you go straight to on resume. So there's a loop between on pause and on resume and when you uh, turn to home screen then the loop is from on on stop to on start so stop to start or resume to pause that's the loop that you go through and if you turn off the app then on destroy to on create then you have to recreate the app recreate i mean create function is called then 
So that's um, basically sums up the activity lifespan of Android Studio. So I know that's a very uh, brief in, uh, introduction of what activity lifespan is, but uh, uh, I may make a video explaining more about uh, lifespan in some future video. So let's then get to how to set the ID of those widgets so that you can reference them in your uh, main Kotlin file. So here you can see we have these four widgets at this time and I'm going to set the ID of each of them. So for uh, starter, we have this right here view. So it's going to take the input. So I'm just going to name it input. Then we have this submit button. Just click on it and set the ID being submit here. So submit. Similarly, I think I'm going to need another widget here. So let's type in the search text view. I know it's on the start. I can I can see that. I mean, if you cannot, then you can just type on the search and it will appear there. And this is the text view. So just align it a bit. So let's uh, uh, set the ID of it to output because it's going to print the output of what we want. So what I'm going to do is create a on click listener. And what it does is whatever we type in our views, it will print that in our text views. So that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, I don't think I should set the con uh, I should just keep them to match height and width match parent so uh, let's undo what we have done with the layout height and width uh, so what I want next is uh, let's uh, search here margins so I'm gonna search margin here and here you can see the margin and in the top one this basically is for every left right top down margin so if you set 20 db here it will uh, set the margin sorry i think i was uh, in the layout here i should just select text view so click on text view and then click on input margin and then set 20 db here and you will be inside that uh, and it will set around the margins here so then this looks better and uh, now what we have to do is move to our code and so I'm going to write the code in Java. That's what I'm most comfortable with. So I said private uh, text view. If you don't know Java or if you don't want to write the code, um, I'm not doing this to show you how to code uh, or make an application. I want to show you something in the code. So let's uh, see text view here and uh, let's make a few more variables. Private added text. And uh, then I'm going to click on uh, that name input. Then I want button here as well. So private button and I'm going to name it submit. And uh, let's reference them in our on create function and I'm in the on create function. I'm going to link it to the layout. So you see the main uh, the logic is in the, uh, in the Java and the UI is in the XML. So there are two languages working in this app. If you use Kotlin, then you can say three. I mean, Let's say input and text find view by id r dot id dot. It said here, uh, what did we name it? Input. So input and then terminate. Similarly, I'm gonna write for other two statement as well. So output, text view, and uh, find view by id and uh, we named it uh, output. So r dot id dot output. And uh, let's again write for our button as well. So submit here, that's what we named it. Equal to, in par parenthesis, I'm just gonna circle the brackets. Okay. Button, find your ID, r dot id dot, submit. S U B M I N T. That's it. And uh, what I'm gonna do is create an on click listener for my button. So I'm gonna just say submit and dot set on click listener. So it will appear in the drop down option. So just click on that. On. Yeah, here's set on click listener. And inside it, I'm just gonna say new view. New view dot. 
you can see it appear view dot on click listener and click an on click function for you as well so it will do most of the work and what i'm going to do is create a string here that will i'm going to name it ask and what i'm going to do is take the input from the uh edit text so i'm going to say is uh, uh let's say input dot get text and i'm going to turn it to string so dot to string so get text dot to string and terminate uh, it as well and i'm going to say uh output dot set text and uh, let's uh, set uh, ask here so whatever we have taken from the input i'm going to set it in the output i think that's uh, what i'm going to go with so let's take the output i mean let's launch the app and see if it works or not so let's look at our app i'm going to type in here uh, my views and i'm going to press submit here and uh, let's uh, print down our keyboard here so here you can see we have printed my views here and that's how on click listener works but what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna take the i'm gonna set uh, i'm gonna write input dot set text and what it's gonna do is uh, it's gonna empty the added text here for me so set text and here i'm just gonna leave it empty and uh, let's see if it works or not so let's write af and you can see the uh, redex is empty again so that means it works but what i'm interested in seeing is uh, if i turn this phone from portrait to landscape mode do i still retain that uh, that string in that text view or not that's what i'm interested in seeing so let's write something like uh, if you like this video subscribe i'm gonna submit here and let's uh, rotate the app yeah. what is okay so it's rotating so it's okay so okay i forget to uh, put the scroll view here that was not scrolling down i made a mistake let's correct it so let's get back to our layout and in the search i'm going to type scroll view and uh, there it is let's drag it in our component tree and uh, what i need to do is in the scroll view i'm going to uh, drag this text view this image view this input submit and output in our scroll view so that we can scroll down if the size of the screen is less and uh, i think that's it that's what i wanted let's run it again and see if it works or not so let's see if i can type like yes or ask to submit it turn the keyboard off so it's there let's rotate it and see if it works so let's scroll down so scrolling is working and you can see text view there not as that would be typed earlier so let's uh maybe it, it was a fluke let's try it again let's try to write something uh something done and uh, let's uh, rotate it again that's a mistake sorry okay let's uh, rotate it and uh, you can see it's not working so what happened is when you rotate your app you destroy the activity that you have previously created so that's what happening so let's do one thing let's create a, a on destroy function and let's see if it's being called or not so on destroy here's again and what i'm going to do is this time if you're using java then just use log t log t on in the class first and uh, then you have to write log t here in inside your on destroy function so you can see it in your so you can in your terminal that's what i'm going to say so let's run it again and see if it works it's going to take some time uh, so what i'm going to do is write something here something submit and uh, just drop drag down and rotate it and uh, let's see the build uh, let's see the run here and uh, if you can see on destroy is being called that means uh, 
when we rotate we call on destroy function and uh, that's what i wanted to say so guys if you like this video consider subscribing press the bell icon so you don't miss another video and uh, thanks for watching